fishing is a big part of the community here, and especially gill netting and seine netting. Uh, most of my life I've uh, been a subsistence uh, fisherman and a hunter. First time I ever went sanding was with my godfather in Sandpoint, seeing just a boatload of fish being dropped onto a deck, and I was just amazed. Sanding out here in Humpy Cove is a lot easier just because it's more sandy and less jaggedy with boulders everywhere. The Humpies like going up small streams so that they can spawn in certain areas. And if you come at the right time, it'll just be boiling with Humpies. And I guess that's why they call it Humpy Cove. Camp Kongayo is held every summer in Analaska in the Aleutian Islands. The word Kongayo means humpback male pink salmon and the word adagayok is a pink salmon without the hump. On Sunday, we seen a bunch of humpies, used all the kids because they could help and we wanted them to be involved. We'll split them in half, usually mix them with the older and younger group and throw them the line from the lead boat. One boat was pulling the net, circling the fish, and then there's a couple other boats trying to scare the fish and keep them inside the net. When you're using the same net, there's a cork line and a lead line, which the lead line floats to the bottom of the water, the net is in between both, and then the cork line is floating on top of the water. You take a boat and you drag the net around the beach so it makes a big loop in the water. As I start pulling in, we have people standing on the outside, stepping on the edge of the bottom of the net to make sure nothing comes out. The word for seining net is kudumachek and nivudek. A couple other boats doing what a normal person would see is like little 360s in the water. What you saw myself and Trevor doing was basically heard the salmon were in the bay here. And that's rarely done. But because there was a shortage of salmon this year, we decided that would be the way to get them. After that, you just pull the net in as far as you can and a big pile of fish just comes up and just start sorting. Have all the kids collect the fish and bleed them. And prepare them, bring them to the fish table, and have them filleted. And after they're filleted and uh, ready to hang, they'll wash them in the creek and make sure they're not all sandy and everything. And then whatever you're gonna do with them, if you're gonna dry them, then you keep the tails on. If you're not, then you can just cut the meat off. Then they just start packing the fish up to the smokehouse one by one and hang them on the rack. We're drying them now at the camp house. I think it's important to understand the old traditional ways. My name is Vince Tudikoff Sr., uh, born and raised in Unalaska. My grandmother was Anfisha Shapsnikoff, and she raised me from the time I was three months old, I think. When I was younger, I grew up in Captain's Bay, and we learned how to beach sand. We didn't have outboards. We had a two-man rowing dory. The nets were about maybe 50 feet long. They were handmade at them days by the elder guys during the winter time. My job in the winter would go and help the elder people. They'd have a night of just sewing a net, put it back into shape, remove the part that's torn up on the rocks from the lead line and we'd re rebuild them. Basically, that's how I learned to fix uh, nets myself. And we'd get two or 300 fish in one haul. And it would take us almost all day. At the end of the season, we'd barrel them into wooden barrels that uh, everybody would get to share everything. There's a lot of people that <clears throat> don't understand why we're saying, and it's to feed a whole group or a family groups and not an individual and whatever is taken is totally shared. It's not uh, kept by any one person. It might be somebody's net, but that net doesn't do any good if you don't have people to help you. Unangakwe, share. Udigidada, udigidada.